Is it possible to load 1 billion rows into an SQL database? How do you do it? And which of these four databases will do it the quickest? Let's find out. This concept comes from the 1 billion row challenge set by Gunnar Morling in January 2024 here. It started as a Java challenge, but I wanted to try it in SQL using four different database vendors. We'll follow the same steps from the billion row challenge to generate the data, which involves running a script from a GitHub repository. Here is the repository we're going to use. I'll use git on the command line to clone this repository. I'm on Windows, so I'll use the command prompt, but terminal on Mac will work as well. I'll change into a directory I'm using for my GitHub repositories. Now I'll run the git clone command to clone the repository that has the scripts to generate the data. After a few seconds, I have a new repository called 1brc. All of these commands that I run are linked in the description, so you can copy and paste them from there. Then I'll change to that directory. Now the next step requires that you have Java installed. I've got it installed on my computer, which I can see if I run java-version. If you get an error here, then I would look into getting Java installed onto your computer. The next step is to build the data generator. We use this command. This runs a Maven command that shows a lot of output. After about a minute, you'll see the prompt again. Next, we generate the measurements file, which is a text file that contains 1 billion rows. This is done using a shell script. Because I'm on Windows, I'll need to do this slightly differently. I'll go to File Explorer and right click on the 1brc folder, select Show More and then select Git Bash. This opens a different terminal window. I can then run the shell script called Create Measurements here with this parameter of 1 billion. Press Enter. The script will run for a little while and create the text file. It shows updates every 50 million rows generated, so you can see the progress. We can see the text file in File Explorer here. It's 13 gigabytes. Now let's import it into some databases. We'll start with MySQL using MySQL Workbench. This is MySQL version 8.4. Before I connect to the database, I need to change a setting for the connection to allow me to import a CSV file. I'll go to Edit Connection and then click on the Advanced tab here. I'll add this opt local in file equals one line here. I've already added it, but it's not there by default. All right, let's connect to the database. I'll start by creating a new table for this data. I'll call it measurements and it has two fields, a city name and a measurement. You may also need to run this set global command to allow data to be loaded in using the load data in file command. So run this to turn it on. Next, we have the command to import data. It's called load data in file and it allows you to import a file into the database table. You can see a few parameters here. We specify the path to the file, which uses forward slashes. It will load the data into the measurements table. The fields are terminated by a semicolon, not a comma, so that's important to specify. We also specify the columns to import into at the end here in brackets. Now let's run the command. It runs for a little while and then it's finished. So that took 6,069 seconds on my laptop, which is about 101 minutes or one hour and 40 minutes. Now the data is loaded, the billion row challenge asks us to calculate the minimum, maximum and average temperature value for each weather station. This can be done easily in SQL using group by. We can run a select query like this to see the result. We can see the results here, which took 2,172 seconds to generate, which is about 36 minutes. So that's how we do it in MySQL. It took 101 minutes to import the data and 36 minutes to generate the results of the query, with a total time of 137 minutes. Let's see how the other databases compare. If you want to spend less time remembering SQL syntax and more time writing your SQL, you'll love the SQL cheat sheets I created. Get your copy using the link in the description. Next, we'll try importing the data using Postgres. I've got the dbeaver editor open here and Postgres installed on my laptop, which is version 16.3. First, we'll create our measurements table, just like we did in MySQL. The table is now created. Now we can import the data. We do this using the copy command. It's similar to MySQL. It loads data from a specified file into the table we just created. We can run this command and wait. It has now been completed. The difference in the start time and finish time is 20 minutes and 26 seconds. Let's run that select query to see the min, max and average values. 
D-Beaver has shown 200 rows at a time, so I'll fetch the next 200 and then the final set to load all 413 rows. The time is measured and displayed for each set of data, which was roughly 11 minutes and then 8 minutes and then 8 minutes again. The total is 27 minutes and 50 seconds. Here is how Postgres compares to MySQL. We can see that Postgres took a total of 47 minutes to get the result, compared to MySQL which was almost 3 times longer with a time of 137 minutes. Let's try our next database. Alright, the next database we'll try this on is SQL Server. I've got SSMS open here and connected to my local database, and the measurements table is already created. To import the text file, we run a command called bulk insert. We specify bulk insert and then the target table. The from keyword links to the file we want to import. Then we have the with keyword to specify some parameters. In this case, we want to specify the delimiter of a semicolon. Next, we run this command. After a while, the command is completed. However, we get an error, which says the primary file group is full. Why has this happened? We can go to the database in the object explorer and look at the properties and then the files. In the main file group here, we can see the current size is about 10,000 megabytes, which is about 10 gigabytes. I'm running SQL Server Express, which has a maximum database size of 10 gigabytes. And once this limit is hit, we'll get this file group is full error. So how can we resolve this? I could use a cloud database or get the enterprise version of SQL Server. But for this example, I'll generate a new file with a quarter of the number of records, which is 250 million. I'll import that file and then multiply the times by four. It's not perfect, but it will have to do. We'll try again with a smaller file of 250 million records instead of 1 billion. The rows have now been imported, which took 14 minutes and 39 seconds. If we multiply that by four to assume it will take four times as long to get 1 billion rows, we have 58 minutes and 36 seconds. Let's run that select query to see the min, max, and average values. We can see the results here, which took 3 minutes and 25 seconds. Once again, if we multiply that by 4, we get 13 minutes and 40 seconds. Here is how SQL Server compares to the other databases. It took about 72 minutes for SQL Server, which was a little higher than Postgres, but about twice as fast as MySQL. Let's look at our final database. We're going to test this on an Oracle database. This is version 21C, installed locally. I'll access it using the SQL Developer extension for VS Code. Oracle has a handy feature called an external table which we can use for this. Let's try that now. The first step is to put our text file in a location that Oracle can access. For my computer, the Oracle home is this 21C folder, so I'll create a new directory here called ext-data. I'll copy the measurements text file and paste it into this folder. Next, we need to create a directory object in the Oracle database. We do this using create directory, and I'll call it ext data, and then refer to the path to the folder I just created. We run this and the directory is created. Next, we need to grant permissions to the user in order to access this directory. It seems strange, but I had issues when I didn't do this. Then we run this select statement. This actually runs on the external file, as though it was a database table. We're just checking that we can read the file for now. We're not importing any data. There are a few parameters here, and I won't go into the details of all of them, but it essentially allows you to specify the columns and data types, field delimiters, and file name. We can run this and see the output here. Now that we've tested this and we can see the data from the table, we can run a similar select query as the other databases to get the aggregate data. So we change our query to use the aggregate functions and grouping. Let's run this. We can see our output here. It's shown the same results as other vendors, and the total runtime was 501 seconds. So we've been able to query the external table directly without importing the data. Here is how the Oracle database handled the import and how it compares to the other vendors. It's much faster as we queried the file directly and didn't import it into our database. However, there is another method we can use with Oracle, which is more of a direct comparison. In the previous Oracle example, we didn't import any data into the database. We did this for other vendors, so let's see how Oracle handles the import of data. One way to do this is to create a new database table that will contain the data from this external table. We can do this using the create table as select syntax. We'll create a new table called measurements like the other vendors. 
Now, instead of specifying columns, we can write a SELECT statement. We'll select the columns from the external table. When we run this, it should load all of the data from the external file into this table. Let's do that now. We run this and we get an error, which says the request exceeds the maximum allowed database size of 12 gigabytes. This is similar to SQL Server, where Oracle Express has a maximum database size of 12 gigabytes. Our data import has exceeded that size. So we'll take the same approach as we did with SQL Server and import 250 million rows instead of 1 billion, then multiply the numbers by four. I've swapped the file behind the scenes and can rerun this command. It is successful. We can see the SQL history tab here shows that it took two minutes and 21 seconds. We can multiply this by four and get nine minutes and 24 seconds. Now we have the data in a real table, we can run the select statement that calculates the aggregate values. We can run this and see our results here, which are familiar to us. This query took 41 seconds and we multiplied by four to get two minutes and 44 seconds. Here is how the create table as select method compares to the plain Oracle table and the other vendors. We can see it took about 12 minutes overall. It's a little slower than querying the CSV file directly, but significantly faster than the other vendors. If you want to spend less time remembering SQL syntax and more time writing your SQL, you'll love the SQL cheat sheets I created. Get your copy using the link in the description. Now, this isn't a perfect comparison. For a start, SQL Server and Oracle didn't allow us to import the full set of data, so we used a smaller data set. There are probably more things we can do to improve the performance of this import process. Maybe there are some server settings that can be changed. But this was just a quick comparison between databases using an easy to create method to import the data. So try it for yourself and let me know how you go in the comments. Once you've imported some data into your database, you'll want to investigate it and analyze it. Watch this video next to see a data analysis project I did where I analyzed the data after importing it with SQL. Thanks for watching.